Dr. Jamal Hussain and Dr. Arif Alper. Can you please both come on the stage? No brainer, okay? Non STEMI, if we're lucky enough to have positive troponins, raise your hands if you are slightly happy when the troponin comes back high. Just a little bit. <laughs> okay, shame on you. All right. And the last group are the people that go undetected in our ER, whether you do one trope, serial tropes, nothing shows up, and yet there is pathology, and we miss these people. So this is the big thing. How do we not miss these people? So in the ER, we're limited, of course. We do our H&P, we do our ECGs, we do our tropes, and then we mix it all together. We cook a little stew up, and we try to figure out, what are we doing with this guy? Is he going home? Is he staying? What am I going to do? All right? Problem is, what we do in the ER is just not good enough. Lots of data has shown that our miss rates are anywhere but 1, 2, up to 5% of sending home MIs or people, people who have MACE within the next 30 days. So how can we make this better? Well, here, let's look at the challenges. We have atypical presentations of, ch of chest pain people. Okay, we have limited tools in the ER. And as we said before, this is an extremely high-risk diagnosis. So what does it lead to? Excessive admissions, over-testing, which is not good for patients, and a huge burden on the system. So this is why a lot of research has gone into minimizing this. Okay? In come the ADPs, right? So accelerated diagnostic protocols. And there are tons of them, right? We did so much research on all of these things. To look at, you can pick yours. Lots of studies are out there. Again, miss rates are pretty good with these, um, whichever you want. Again, one for the Canadians, Vancouver rule. Um, again, miss rates are about less than 1% if you're lucky, but again, 1% to 2% for 30-day MACE, okay? So again, can we make it better? Here, you memorized, I'm sure everybody's memorized this slide, but just to quickly uh, summarize, AHA recommends that after a negative workup in the ER, if you're considering sending them home, they still need some form of pr provocative testing, some stress test in some form. That can either be done inpatient or outpatient. Okay, so what kind of stress test do we have? It's the usual, treadmill, stress echo, nuclear stress, Nuclear stress is probably the most common one now because it has the best negative predictive values. Okay? And I'm going to try to talk about CT angio. Okay? Why are we talking about it? Well, unfortunately, stress testing is just not very good. If you look at studies, this Nuremberg study, basically, um, people, whether they had a stress test, whether it was positive, negative, didn't have one, it didn't really change the doctor's minds whether they were admitted or not. So having a previous negative stress test does not affect your admission rate. Likewise, it's this, although it looks big, this did not reach statistical significance. So having a negative stress test in the last year or so does not reduce your risk of 30-day MACE. Another study by Walker, they looked at the incidence of 30-day MACE in people who had a negative stress test. And then this is all forms of stress tests, not just uh, exercise stress test. Within the last three years, 20% of people who had a negative stress test within the last three years had 30-day MACE. Huge, right? Okay, so let's talk about what's CT angio good for? Well, it's been in use since the 80s, okay? We know what the CT angio is. It's basically like angiography, but without the intervention part of it, okay? The difference between angio and the other forms of stress testing is this is what we call anatomical testing as opposed to functional testing, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why that's important. In functional testing, well, you get to see whether the person has either acute ischemia or has inducible ischemia, okay? But in the anatomic one, we get a better look at the anatomy, and we get to look at a couple other things as well. So we'll talk about that. You get to look at whether there are plaques or not plaques, whether there's stenoses or not stenoses, also non-calcified plaques. It is the most reliable method to detect non-obstructive coronary disease non-invasively. I can even assess LV function in some cases. So here's an example of a nice clean coronary, right? Here's an example of ones that have lesions. Again, just looks like your cath report, okay? So if we want this test to be good, what do we need? Well, we want obviously to be reliable, so we want a very good negative predictive value, right? We want to show that it actually reduces workups, less testing the people, less admissions, less burden on the, on the system. We want to try to reduce cost if we can in this day and age. And of course, we want to not introduce any new adverse effects. Okay, so 
the literature is very uh, extensive out there. Um, I was surprised, actually, how many studies there are. I'm just going to focus on a few of these. These are the big ones out there, OK? So Ramacat 1 is probably the first one. This is out of, uh, I think it was, it was uh, in Boston. I don't know if it was Mass General, uh, Hoffman et al. So they looked at 368 patients. So here's a very, very important take home point. So they took these low risk chest pain, chest pain people. They did a CTA, right? 50% of these low risk people had absolutely no coronary disease, clean coronaries. And guess what happens to those people? They have no ACS over the next whatever time period. I'll show you that. And 50% had something. Now the something is, you know, again, it's harder to define what do we do with that something. Some people will argue, I'm sure Dr. Alpha argue, this leads to increased angios. You get these false, I don't want to say false positives, but you get higher rates of, uh, of angios because now you've found something and you feel obliged to do something about it, much like in the subarachnoid uh, population when you find an aneurysm. So again, sensitivity and negative predicted value was 100% in these people who had no uh, clean coronaries, which is what you would expect, OK? This went up to six months and even followed up to two years. In two years, those who had clean coronaries, no events, right? Sounds pretty good. So that guy that comes by next time, the ones that come on every two months, that, that little twinge that you just don't know what to do with and you just want to kind of ignore it, well, now you have some more evidence to back your decision up. This is a study out of Pennsylvania, again. So 1,300 uh, uh, su subjects. Again, they show that CTA is very safe in low-risk patients, no adverse events. And they comp compared to traditional care, there's a high rate of discharge, which is good, 50% versus 23% from the ER after this negative study. A shorter length of stay and higher rate of detection of coronary artery disease, again. CT stat, another one comparing one of the most commonly used modalities, which is um, nuclear stress testing. Again, 54% reduction time to diagnosis and 40% reduction in cost. This is one I would be a little bit skeptical about. A lot of studies show other than that, but no difference in MACE, very important. Okay, so these three big studies show out of 3,000 people, negative CTA, they sent home, no missed events. Very important. So another follow-up study, the same people that did Ramacat 1, did Ramacat 2. Again, compared to standard evaluation, the length of stay decreased by seven hours. Rate of discharge increased, same thing. No difference cardiovascular events. And they even found that the cost was just slightly higher. So they, their conclusion, CTA decreases length of stay without an increased ri uh, risk to the patient. The PROMISE trial, huge, 10,000 people. Again, comparing low to intermediate risk chest pain patients for either CTA or functional testing. So in the end, actually CTA patients ended up getting fewer caths. Makes sense, right? You've already done a semi-cath. You found that the coronaries are clean. Well, they're not gonna need one down the line to help confirm your, your previous suspicion. So remember this study, the PROMISE trial, the negative CTA, I promise your angio will be negative for three months. Again, Chow followed that up. Also, the introduction of CTA in their uh, population reduced, uh, this is interventional uh, cath catheterizations. So what are the advantages again? You can detect stenosis, the plaques, and an LV function. All right, speed we already talked about. They showed decreased length of stay faster discharge time in all these studies. Safety, again, has been shown, very few uh, side effects. Out of the 5,000 pa patients in the PROMISE study, only five patients had any kind of, so less than less 0.1%, had any kind of significant uh, problem. Long-term follow-up is very good. Again, a negative CTA predicts two years, no ACS. And then this, this one also, three years in Japan. Cost, not much different. Okay, let's talk about some of the other, uh, what's the word? Undefinable uh, benefits, okay? So more prognostic information, okay? So again, key thing, it's not just what's going on right now, but some people have argued that CTA can give you a preventative idea of what's going, might happen in the future. So say you have clean coronaries, good. Very unlikely you're gonna have ACS within the next two, three years. That's good news. 
But what if you have something? What if you have a 50% lesion? What if you have a 60% lesion? Well, chances are regular stress testing probably would not pick that up. And you probably would go on and on for how many months until your next chest pain event came. And then maybe then you would test positive. But at least now, if we have this CTA that shows us there's at least some stenosis, maybe we'll keep a closer eye on it. And some studies have shown that people who have these positive CTAs end up getting higher rates of aspirin and statins, and in the end, end up having lower rates of MI compared to other patients. So there's some benefit here. Again, just like we said, so to assess your future risk, not just what's going on right now. Okay? And of course, the big one, right? Not everybody with chest pain has ACS. What about these other things? Okay? So this a regular stress test is not going to give you information, of course, on you know, dissection or other things like that. They'll probably do very poorly if they get stressed with a dissection. But this uh, CT, not, this is not a triple rule out study. This is just a regular CT angio. Gives you information on these things. All right, it's not, not all rosy. I will help my friend give him some of the, the negatives. Of course, there's contrast involved, the usual contrast problems. There is, unfortunately, some radiation, okay? Um, these two very well-known societies have said that it's okay, it's safe for them. Uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, are not candidates for CTA, and this is probably the biggest limitation, okay? So if you look at the, rel the definitive, uh, definite contradications, Obviously, anybody that has definitive ACS, well, there's no need to do a CT angio. You don't need to. If they have ACS, you should be going to cath, okay? If they have poor renal function, previous anaphylaxis, they can't cooperate, pregnancy, okay? And then the relative ones, which are probably more common, and obese patients, you're going on a CT scanner, of course, okay? Beta blockade. Now, in the preparation to do a CT angio, there's a couple small things. I'm gonna talk on the next slide of what you need to do. They need, the heart rate needs to be at a certain level because CT gets a better quality image when there's less heart rate variability. So they need, sometimes need to get beta blockade. And nitroglycerin also some, sometimes helps to dilate their arteries so they get a better picture as well. And this is user dependent. All right, we talked about this already. They can't have smoked or had coffee for 12 hours prior, so that probably rules out like 85% of the patients, okay? Um, AHA, okay, so this is the AHA guidelines. You have a normal ECG, normal tropes, no history of CAD, guess what? Level of evidence A, okay, is reasonable to perform CT coronary angio, as opposed to arresting myocardial perfusion imaging, which is level B. It's proved by just a few well-known agencies and organizations, most of which I don't know who they are, but they sound very important. Again, if you look at the indications, level of evidence, CT angio has, down the, across the board, has been approved level A, A evidence. Even the Brits have gotten on board. The Brits now have put CT angio as a high level uh, stress rule out, uh, sorry, rule out uh, investigation study, okay? CT angio leads to more accurate detection of coronary artery disease, fewer second line investigations, more definitive rule out of coronary artery disease. So they recommend it as first line, the Brits. First time I agree with them. Okay, so, Dr. Alper, which will it be? Phone or new technology? Oh, uh, let me say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We'll have Dr. Arif uh, contest the no part. <clears throat> Actually, I didn't listen. Uh, what did he talk about? <laughs> I really didn't listen. The only thing I remember <clears throat> When I was actually stepping up here, he was saying that we are going to play basketball. Oh, I played 14-year-old basketball. I play, you know, play professional, and I earn money from it. I live with basketball, 14 years. But what I know since then, actually, he said, I remember that I'm playing home game tonight, and with my home crowd, actually. Thank you so much. And I want my enemy close, because you have to keep your enemy close. But uh, yes, I wasn't actually his first opponent. How many days ago? I don't know, maybe 10 days, 15 days ago, Saleh called me. And I, I didn't ask him, and I saw the name Jamal Amin. I'm OK. <laughs> so I will beat him very badly. So today, please don't wait any you know, formal lecture from me. I did a lot. This is a very informal street trash talk. 
and I'm ready for it. And I hope you guys are ready for it. And Saleh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep there, all right? <laughs> Don't go anywhere. All right, let me prepare myself. And I hope you will give us some extra time. OK, it's OK. And why I'm saying a home crowd? Because I have multiple, many students here. There's some of them actually residents. And they take care of me very nice in the college. And actually, one of them actually came, you know, bring me a kind of towel and said that, sir, you, you're going to be sweat, so it's better to prepare well. <laughs> so my, I have my towel also with me. So you're not going out alive today. <laughs> so because I said I'm in a different level now, so what I mean actually different level, I mean I'm in a boxing mode now. Of course, Jamal had a plan to beat me. But unfortunately, he failed already. And I will show you, you know, at the end how he failed. So shall we start? All right. No regrets. Whatever happens, he can beat me. But no regrets at the end. We are, we are, we are friends in him. All right. I, I have no conflict of interest, anything about I'm talking in that talk. Uh, so therefore, I'm very ready to speak very freely on it. When Saleh called me, I thought, OK, CT and Geo. So actually, the, I, I thought three questions, actually. Which patients actually we need to do it? And which technology we need to use it? And if I were to read it, is, will it be really, really successful you know, evaluation of that CT scan? No. So who is going to read it? So it actually, the first three questions actually came to my mind very, like, you know, flashback. And I prepare for it, of course. But what I prepare, I try to find the best evidence as much as possible. So this talk has many studies, but just, you know, plain, hardcore information from that studies. Not much numbers, nothing. Just, you know, highlighted parts. OK, I search. Coronary CTA, if I write, I found that amount of study and pretty much you know, systemic reviews and uh, the meta-analysis. And I said, the 10 days I have, I said, I cannot, no, no, I cannot read that old stuff, impossible. And I search more for ED, and I find five systematic reviews and one meta-analysis. And I said that, OK, I'm, I'm very safe. I can you know, read all, prepare myself and go for it. And also look for, it's actually written there slice, but it's about the, the, the technology specific I look for. And there are many systematic reviews and meta-analysis to look for what type of technology you have to use. So they did many studies about it, which is nice. Unfortunately, about uh, the radiologists, there is no study I can find with systematic review and meta-analysis category saying there is an inter-observer reliability issue or validity, whatever you say, or variation. I couldn't find anything actually meaningful. But I find very nice studies, and I will use one of them to do similar, all of them similar. I will just use one of them uh, about who is actually evaluating. It's very critical. OK, again, the questions. Which patient, which technology, and who should read? Of course, when I'm saying something, Whatever the you know, US friends does or Singaporean does, does not really matter, actually, because it depends where are you working. I am working in LA. If I have a time, one day a week, Tuesdays, I'm in the Tawam resuscitation area if I don't have any other appointment. So I'm looking for what I read. Is it really, really you know, applicable to my space? So I think you should think in this way also. Whatever you read from the Canada, it does not mean anything. May not mean anything. I know we are a very rich country, but still there are you know, obstacles, and I will show you. All right, which patients? What we know, every study says the same thing. It is better to find low risk patients or maybe intermediate risk patients. So we know it already. You know, since almost 15 years, the same patient groups actually we need to investigate with the CT scan as an angiography. So your patient 
it's better to be a low risk. If not, it's better to be maybe intermediate. It's not more than that. OK, this is the rule. And one interesting thing I recognized, the females, actually, if you're studying males and females in one group, the prediction of, about you know, prognosis is much, much better in the female group. It is so interesting. There is a sexual difference, actually, gender difference. So first two slides. Your patient will be low risk. It's better to be low risk. Your patient will be female. It's better to be female, because these are the best group. And one interesting thing I actually the, the meet. One study saying that, oh, we have a radiation exposure, which is we know it already. And we have motion artifacts because of the technology. It's in 2010, by the way. And they mentioned if it is you know, high BMI, the examination is terrible. I mean, the, the who is reading it, they don't understand, actually, because of the artifacts and the quality of the image. So therefore, BMI is very important. Today, world has 30% obesity. Can you imagine? I'm, 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 I'm looking at the crowd now. We don't have. Who are they? I'm like, we know. We actually, we, in the ER, we have many you know, obese patients. Why is this important for my context? Look at this, 2015. Obesity rate in UAE doubled the world average. 30% world average. UAE, 60%. I don't believe this number. Well, why I don't? Because I don't see them. Do you? You don't, right? This is wrong. I failed. I'm sorry. OK, you won. <laughs> All right. Anyway, BMI is important. So three things. Low risk, female, normal BMI. Actually, this three things is good to marry with also. But they are eligible to get the CT scan too. So it's good. All right. Heart rate is very important. They said they should be definitely less than 70. Your chest pain patient, low risk, female, normal BMI, has less than 70 heart rate. Who are they? I don't think. I don't see these patients. All right. This is a very legal, legal thing. Think you are chair of the department and you are responsible for all reimbursement, all payment from the insurance companies. They studied and they found that 50% of the orders are wrong. The insurance company is not paying to you. Think about this way also. You're ordering, but you're not getting money. And at the end, I will show you, patient not get any outcome benefit too. Okay, I'm now switching to which technology. The most difficult discussion about the technology is getting exposure to huge radiation. So this is very difficult to actually fix, unfortunately. And whatever they do, yes, I admit, you know, CTA help, you know, somehow the patient. I admit this. But they are still getting huge radiation exposure. They cannot do anything about it. They studied four slides, 16 slides, 46 slides. Look at here. I mean, six millisievert, 10 millisievert, 11 millisievert. Technology is actually getting better, but no change. I mean, there is no decrease in the, the radiation exposure. So what is wrong? Of course, we fix it now. So the, the new technology, it fixes it. So one more thing. You do CT scan, and then the, uh, the results come in the, in the term mind. So this patient group happening a lot in the uh, low risk patient and intermediate patients. And then what? They were asking physiologic studies. And they were there already. Why didn't we send in advance? Yeah, and why we did we choose that way, give the exposure, all radiation to patient, or IV contrast, everything? Why? So this is actually a really difficult area. And finally, this, this is the first study I saw in two, 2013. 200, 320 slides. Uh, actually, when I saw it, why double, you know, 256 or something? Not, not, why not 512 or something? Why is two, 320? I, didn't, I, I still didn't know. But they found this slice, amount of slides, 
find actually you know, reached highest negative predictive value first time. How many of you has more than 256 slice machine in your ER? Who has it? Anyone? I think we don't have it. As far as I know, Tavam is yeah, a very rich hospital, but I don't think they have 256. I don't think. At least not in the ER. Yeah. Maybe radiology, yes. I don't know. So who should read it? A lot of papers about it. Who is reading is very critical. Level of experience, definitely no game changer. Now I'm working in Tawam, and I'm, let's say, it's Tuesday I'm working, and I'm actually communicating with the radiologist very nicely, and I love him. He is great. He, he, he perfectly done everything, and I trust him about the CTA. It's just he's very experienced, okay? But next week, I'm going to shift. Uh, I'm learning that my radiologist left the country. There's a new guy. I don't know who. And what is this actually, you know, limits? Can he help me? These are the challenges, I think, we are facing in this country. And I'm facing in LA. I think everybody facing here. Too many turnovers. So you cannot, you know, keep up with it. So this is actually very, uh, uh, the, the, the hard point. Right? All right, as I said, your patient will be low risk. Female, low BMI, heart rate will be less than 70, and appropriately you have to order, otherwise you cannot get any money. Low radiation technology, which is now available, and experienced radiologists, these are your needs. If you have complete this package, call us, CT scan is, is the best. But how many times do you have these patients? Zero. I can say to you, zero. More, there are other factors actually affecting uh, this uh, decision-making process. And plus, the studies show that whatever they actually help for the CTA, unfortunately, there is no really, really big impact to decision-making and not big impact to the outcome already in 2011. And I have new ones. And some of them said, no effect in mortality. It is true, which is 2016. Another one says, no difference at all. And I'll show you how they show. These are the numbers. All prospective randomized control trials accumulated here. It's actually crossing the one, which means no difference between CTA and normal conventional road. No difference. What is this? Major you know, acute coronary event. No difference. So why I'm bothering my patient to go to expose, you know, radiation and get, you know, uh, the contrast material? Okay, another one. Is there any difference in that? No. No difference at all. At least, let's say something like this. Whatever, the, you know, Jamal said is, is true. I mean, the technology getting better and definitely will be better. But I believe not today, not with my patients. Okay, this is readmission. No difference. But you are still not satisfied, right? All right. I have one more. <laughs> one last shot. OK. 2017, November. When is the November? 10 days ago. All right. What they are saying? CTA is beautiful. Beautiful. If you have all this package, nice package, it's beautiful. But it's not affiliated with any mortality decrease or cardiac hospitalizations. So this is our main final outcomes we want to reach. No change. So I think they need to do more advanced, nice studies to convince us, and which is applicable to my place, our context. All right? So whatever you have today is not working. And I know the answer, actually. You don't need to say it to me. I just published yesterday night for 12 hours, and ask the people, what are you thinking? This is actually pure fight survey. <laughs> Which is fight now, Yanni. <laughs> and what you were saying? 77, 23. When the, actually this poll closed, it was 70 to 30. 70, no. I know the answer. But now, <laughs> because I'm in a boxing match, I the boxers actually talk it's a little bit strange. And I end up with the totally strange thing. I just want you to close your eyes 
two, three seconds. I will say you something and think about it two, three seconds more. Just close your eyes. Think about it 20 years from now. You know, the world has 30 billion people, 30 billion, let's say. And there are actually regulations saying that if you do CPR, you are going to sue as a doctor. You cannot save anybody because too many people around and somebody has to die, Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> so think about it, about CTA, 20 years from now. Who cares CTA? <laughs> there are 30 billion people, no food, no water. So as a you know, schizophrenic you know, steps, where I am stopping by, birth control is very important. <laughs> this is the end of almost my talk. But we come to this level, Yanni. Please make your birth control very nicely. We don't need too much people. I don't want to lose my job. I want to save the people. Anyway, so now what I'm doing, I'm opening the poll again, which is the post-fight survey right here. I'm now submit ESM 617, Dr. Chevik, whatever. You can vote now. 15 minutes is open. And, and final, of course everybody has a plan. I had a plan. So I think enough punch the Jamal get and knock out already. I don't know what you think. Thank you so much. I think that was an awesome debate. Uh, what do you guys think, right? Wonderful. Another round of applause. <laughs> On behalf of the scientific committee, the audience, and everyone, I, like, I would like to thank every one of you well, well for participating in this session, giving your best shots, and benefiting the crowd. And without any further delay, we'll interrupt the session because we are starting off the afternoon a little bit earlier than usual. You'll be, you'll be coming back to the tracks around 1 o'clock, and this is just to benefit you to get you out early in the afternoon after the closing ceremony. So thank you very much. The speakers are here. Please feel free to walk up to them, grab a picture, talk to them, and a big round of applause.